Hello and welcome to a new video about standard elements in control engineering. Last time we did the PD element, you remember hopefully. Huh? We used the proportional element. Mm -hmm. We used the derivation element, the D element. And out of those two we produced the PD element. Okay? So we had the PD element. Now we're doing very similar approach, we just get away the D element and use instead the I element. So we're producing a P I element, but exactly in the same way. Okay? P I elements are pretty important because P I elements are often used as controller. We are going to see this in the in the further videos. Yeah? So P I element. P I element is our topic now. Yeah. And I can tell you, we element, we will do it exactly the same way as we did the PT element. Yeah. There we have used two elements. Yeah. One element is the P element. Yeah. One element now is the I element. Yeah? The input is transferred to both elements yeah? and of both elements there's a certain output. This output is summarized and building the total output. Yeah? So here we have our xi from s, our input. Here we have our xo from s, our output. And this shall reflect how a pi element looks like. Plus, plus. Both are added to each other. So parallel approach again. Let's have a look at the transfer function of a pi element. This was the brand transfer function of the pi element. Okay some gain factor simply. Okay. So let's note it. Transfer function of this p element is kp. I will again use the index p to determine, okay, this is now from our p element. What was the transfer function of our i element? Let's look. Here we had two, two possible representations. So this is ki divided by s or 1 divided by sti at integration time. I will, I personally prefer the integration time, but this is why I'm going to use this now here, because simply I can see the integration time here. And also here at this, at this frequency, at this characteristic or this where we reach the one line, the one gain frequency, crossover frequency, there is also one divided by ti, so I can ti I can see everywhere. So our transfer function of the i element gi is one divided by sti. What is the total transfer function? Well, the total transfer function g from s equals gp. plus, uh, because we add the other side, gi. So this equals kp plus 1 divided by sti. And this would be already the transfer function of the pi element. However, usually we do a little twist. Yeah? Usually we will put kp outside a bracket, 1 plus and now 1 divided by s kp ti. Mm. So this now looks a little bit strange because now I have a multiplication here. However, these two things, they are constant, so I will name them tn. Yeah? I will substitute the multiplication kp multiplied by ti with tn. Mm. So our resulting 
transfer function is kp multiplied by 1 divide plus 1 divided by stn. This is now the standard transfer function of a p element, how it usually is used. Also, this version is pretty common, however, we will use this one. What does it mean for uh, the frequency response? We formally have to exchange this S with J omega, so we are ending up at Kp 1 plus 1 divided by J omega Tn. Okay. Let's have a look what it means. Here's the real axis, here's the imaginary axis. Well, Kp, Kp is just Kp. This is the first term here, Kp. And now we have to 1 plus 1 divided by j. And I already mentioned once, I already mentioned once, we could write this as Kp. 1 minus j, 1 divided by omega tn. Yeah. Why can put this j above? I also explained once, yeah, because 1 divided by j equals j divided by j multiplied by j equals j divided by, the, by j squared equals j divided by minus 1, because j is the square root of minus 1, so this is minus j. Yeah? This is what is behind this. Yeah? So actually, we are here 1, yeah? and then we are going down to 1 divided by omega tn. Yeah? This is the other part of the multiplication. This part and this part. Now let's think about the extremes or let's think about let's think about the absolute value and and so on. So the absolute value of j omega, g from j omega is kp multiplied uh, by the square root of 1 squared plus 1 divided by omega tn squared. Uh, here, Pythagoras again, 1 squared, 1 divided by tn squared, is this squared, this divided by the square root. So this is the absolute value. And the argument is the argument of kp plus the argument of this part here. So it's kp is the 0, yeah, plus, and now arcos tangents from minus 1, Arcus tangents from minus imaginary part divided by real part. Real part is 1, so it's just the imaginary part minus 1 divided by omega tn. Okay. This is the, this is the argument. Now let's have again a look what it means if we go to the extremes. So what it means if we have omega zero or omega infinite? Okay. Omega zero. Absolute value of g j zero equals. If I put in here zero, this will get huge, yeah, infinite. 1 plus infinite is still infinite, square root of infinite is still infinite, something multiplied by infinite is infinite, infinite. This j unlimited infinite, uh, 1 divided by something very big is very small, very small squared is small, still very small, so 
this is 0, yeah? 1 plus 0 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, 1 multiplied by kp is kp. At high frequencies we are reaching kp, at low frequencies or 0 we are somewhere else, yeah? far, far away. The argument? J0? Yeah? Let's see. So this is this angle, 0, minus this angle. Yeah? And if this is getting bigger, 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 because omega is 0, boop, 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 this will reach boop, minus 90 degree. Minus 90 degree. Yeah? And the argument at infinite frequency, at infinite frequency this is 0, so it will it's also a real number, and 0 minus 0 is 0, so we have 0 degree. Okay. PI element, this is the math, this is the math behind the PI element. Okay. Now let's switch to our Bode plot and to, to the step response. So we're talking about PI element. I will transfer the transfer function, so we said this is kp, multiplied by 1 plus 1 divided by stn. This means j omega equals kp, 1 plus 1 divided by j omega tn. Okay, And we said the absolute value is kp multiplied by the square root plus 1 divided by omega tn squared. And the argument is the arcus tangens from minus 1 divided by omega tn. Okay. That's it. Let's remember. Uh, so we have a p-element here, yeah? we have a p-element, and we have basically a p-i-element, uh, i-element. How did the p-element step response, if we're talking about the step response now, how did the p-element look like? Here, nothing, and here, chuck, we're jumping to a certain value, which is kp. In my example here, kp is 2. Okay? So this is the step response of the P part. And now let's come to the step response of the I part. Step here is also zero. And then starting with the input, it will start to ramp up. Okay. And here we can see integrating time ti. Okay. We've had this. Seen this. Huh? This is the i element. This is the p element. That's it. And now I just have to add those two. Huh? So 0 and 0 is 0. Huh? Here we are starting to jump back. Huh? This is the p part. And now we are additionally ramping up. This is the step response of a PI element. Also here, here we have a delta of 1. Here we could see this TI again. However, you know, it's not easy to measure. Yeah, it's not easy to measure. What is rather easy? Look at this. This time. This triangle and this triangle, they're similar. So here in the time ti, I grow to 1. Here in this time, 
I grow up to Kp. So I grow to a, to a value of Kp. So this means I need Kp multiplied by Ti at a time. Okay. This we know from somewhere. Kp multiplied by Ti. It's Tn. So this is Tn. This is exactly the time here in our transfer function. Now it makes sense that we did this, right? Because we can see it in the step response rather easy. We have just to measure. We have just to extend this line. And here is the so-called Nachstellzeit, Tn. Yeah? yeah, step response. Easy, right? Now let's also think about, let's put together the, the body plot for our PI element. Let's also think what is the, what is the P element. Here we're at K, here we're at zero. So let's draw it in here. K, I use two. So here's two line. And at zero. That's the P part. That's the P part, and now let's come to the I part. How did the I part look like? We had this omega d here. Okay. We had this omega d, uh, crossover frequency, Durchtrittsfrequenz uh, in German, and this omega d was uh, 1 divided by Ti. Okay. Here, we had it. 1 divided by Ti. Okay. Ti, in my case, in my case, I selected a Ti value of 10, so at 1 divided by Ti, 1 divided by 10, here, yeah, this would be the I part now. We'll go down. And I part. We are at minus 90 degree. Right. So we are here, minus 90. That's it. Now let's again think about how it looks like here. Imaginary real. So we have here this Kp. And here, down here, we have one divided by omega ti. Yeah. So this is the integration. Of, this is this part, minus 90 degree, yeah, and one divided by omega ti. The bigger omega gets, the smaller it gets. Yeah. This, this is this part. And we want to build the sum of those two. If this here is very long, this doesn't really matter. So if here we have high values, we will look like exactly like, like an I element here. If this here is compared short to this here, it does not really matter that, that the result will be close to Kp. So here, at big values, we are here, look like Kp. And in the in transition phase, where both are almost equally sized, yeah, what happens if both are equal? Yeah? Then we have here and here the same amount. We are at minus 45 degrees, yeah? because if both lengths are the same, it's a square. Uh, and we're at minus 45 degree, and it, this is 1, this is 1, so we have the factor square root of 2 again. Yeah? So we are here somewhere. Here is the point where both are the same. Yeah? This is this value. Here we are at minus 45 degree. Yeah? Yeah? And we are factor uh, 
one divided by a factor square root of two, <laughs> square root of two, of course, uh, higher. So it will look like this. Poo. Okay. Now here, here we know this is omega d. And we said omega d is 1 divided by ti. Here we are at kp. And I want to know how big is this frequency here. This frequency, I want to know where this band is. Yeah? So this is this omega g. Since I want to get up to kp, I know here it's 1. Yeah? I need a factor kp lower frequency. So my omega g equals my omega d divided by kp. Because I know it's getting bigger, the smaller I get. So I need to divide by kp. So this is 1 divided by kpti, kp multiplied by ti, this is tn, so this is 1 divided by tn. Okay. Again we have this tn here, 1 divided by tn, so this band is exactly at 1 divided by tn. Let's see if the math turns out. If this is 1 divided by tn, this omega multiplied by tn is 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, square root of 2, pack we are square root of 2 higher, above kp, past. What is happening here? 1 divided by 1 is minus 1, arcos times from minus 1 is minus 45 degree, pack. Oh, so good, okay? Here we have a transition phase, we are here almost at minus 90 degree. We had this yeah? at zero frequency, we have minus 90 degree. Then we're going up, passing here minus 45, and then slowly but steady and never exceeding zero, approaching zero. Because at high frequency, we have zero angle. Everything is fitting together again. Yeah. That's nice. Graphical approaches with just overlapping the two transfer functions. Also the mathematical approach yeah, turned out that everything fits. PI element. Last time, last time, last time. Last time we did uh, the PD element. And we said the PD element this is, you know, there's a jump to infinity. This is not working well in, in reality. So we had the same issue with the D element. And we will try to make the PD element a little bit more realistic by the same approach we made the D element a little bit more realistic by use of a PT1 element. This will then be in next video. Okay? So next video we are producing of a PT element and a PT1 element, a PTT1 element. Long name, even it's an abbreviation, you are going to see. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.